Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome back to Hot News. It's the second day with me being without my team, so that's great. We're going to get into all of the tech news, including things about the 3080 Ti, the 3060 Ti, and the fact that I think AMD is more confident in their supply chain than NVIDIA is after we talk about today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Dot Tech Domains. We all know that 2020 has been hard. We know that it's just been a garbage year for a lot of people, myself included. I've lost my team. It's just been a wild ride, which is why Dot Tech Domains wants to reintroduce some joy to your life for this holiday shopping season for Black Friday. And normally in an ad spot like this, I'd be talking about how you should go get a Dot Tech domain because you're a techie and you love tech. And so UFD.tech is the best domain you could own. But that's not what we're doing today. That's not what they want to communicate. Instead of announcing any sort of promotion where you're going to get a discount, they actually just want to give stuff away to you. So if you go to the link in the video description, they actually have an innovative way of engaging with you guys in a fun manner that I actually thoroughly enjoyed. It's called Break the Code. You check the link in the video description, you go over there, you solve a few puzzles, and then you're entered in to win prizes from a $100 Amazon voucher all the way up to a $5,000 custom gaming grant or even a PlayStation 5. They have a ton of stuff that they're giving away up to $15,000 in total prizes. The link will be in the video description for it. They just asked for your email to contact you in case you win, but they're not using it to sell you anything. Dot Tech just wants you to enjoy some part of your year. Solving these puzzles, breaking the code, and enjoying your life is really what Doc Tech Domain wants to do for this Black Friday. So I highly encourage you check them out. They're sponsoring this episode of Hot News, and this is one of the very few times where we have a sponsor who's not trying to convert you guys into a sale. They're actually just trying to uh, give you a, a brain puzzle to help you enjoy your life. So check it out at the link in the video description. Big thanks to Doc Tech Domains for sponsoring today's video. Okay, now it's time to talk about NVIDIA and the fact that we have some more indication on when their competition for the RX 6000 series is coming out. To which I hear you say, but Brett, don't they already have cards out there? Aren't that competition? No, that aren't competition at all, especially not for the 6900 XT, which is supposed to be launching on December 8th. The 3080 Ti now looks set to launch in January of 2021 and will likely have 20 gigabytes of GDDR6X VRAM. Now for the rest of the specs, it actually looks like, according to various sources that I'm finding, that this will roughly be an RTX 3090, maybe cut down by like 500 CUDA cores to be around 10,000 instead of 10,500, but roughly the same with four gigabytes less VRAM. And that's kind of it, which is intriguing because, you know, the 6800 XT has been found to beat the 3090 in several instances. I can't imagine what the 6900 XT is going to do to it. And if the 3080 Ti is going to come in priced at 999, it's going to be a hard sell regardless. Obviously, NVIDIA does have features such as CUDA acceleration and their tensor cores with RTX broadcast and things like that, that could give it a slight edge to buy something at the thousand dollar price point NVIDIA over AMD. But I think personally, unless NVIDIA comes in at the 899 price point here, it's just, it's kind of, it's over for them as far as a gaming crown winner. AMD, clearly right now, the 6800 XT, a much better value buy if you're just concerned with gaming performance and not at all any of the secondary stuff that comes with graphics cards. But then we also have something that AMD doesn't have, which is a lower end card. The 3060 Ti performance got leaked. We have slides from Nvidia showing that it is indeed faster than an RTX 2080 Super in normal rasterization, as well as in ray tracing, and yada, yada, yada. This is on top of the fact that retailers have been posting that the 3060 Ti is out there. We're looking like this is gonna probably launch around the same time as the 6900 XT, but beating the 2080 Super, we're expecting at this point a 399 price setup, which would allow it to be a very good main mid-range card for a lot of people and could potentially continue to sell out. And you're just not gonna be able to get one because this is gonna be more in demand than the 3070. I don't understand how, NVIDIA is going to keep up with all of this. We've got some more evidence that a 3060 Ti's are being registered. We also have evidence that a 3050 should be coming out sometime in January as well. It'll likely have 2,304 CUDA cores, 90 watt TGP, which uh, this will hopefully come in somewhere in the sub $300 region and would make it a lot easier for people to pick up a ray tracing card. But speaking of stock, NVIDIA, according to interviews that were done, don't expect this to get changed 
changed for months. We're probably going to be like probably through the first quarter of next year before you're going to be able to reliably go to a store and pick up an RTX 30 series card. This is also what we heard from Microsoft's head on whether or not the consoles would ever be in stock. It seems like this is going to last for the entire holiday shopping season and through a good part of early next year. Jensen Wong himself saying, but you know, the world is constrained at the moment. And so we just have to make the best of it. And the best of it just means letting the bots get in and scalping them on eBay. That's winning for me, my friends. And uh, MSI decides that this is the perfect time to launch another card, the Supreme. I actually really like the look of this, but you know, that's all I'll get is a look at it because holy crap, am I never going to be able to buy this because it's not going to be in stock anywhere. It's a good looking card, though. Good job, MSI. I appreciate that. But while well, NVIDIA continues to let us down, AMD seeming pretty confident in what they have to the point where they're going to discontinue the reference designs of the RX 6000 series in early 2021 and just allowing third parties to be the sellers that are happening. And especially if stock can keep up with all of that, then AMD doesn't have to deal. This is a completely different way than NVIDIA is going where they're just like, we choose that we are going to sell and we're going to compete with our AV partners. Andy's just like, yeah, we're, we'll are we make it for launch, but we're, we'll move on from that. And also some promises by AMD being kept a little bit earlier than anticipated. You weren't expected to be able to use a Ryzen 5000 series CPU on B450 motherboards until January. Well, that was until ASRock released a BIOS update yesterday that allows you to do it now. You can get your ASRock B450 450 motherboards to support the new Ryzen 5000 series chips. Thanks, ASRock, for keeping the promise. It's good stuff. Just want to quickly mention this article because it's something intriguing that we haven't really seen before. There's ray tracing enabled on a game most people won't care about, Godfall, but it's only for AMD cards right now, not for NVIDIA cards, and that's just neat. I just think it's neat. Also quickly mentioning that the 11900K has its specs leak with eight cores, 16 threads, single boost, 5.3 gigahertz, 4.8 boost, which as we know from Intel, this is gonna be based on a brand new architecture. We could see double digit IPC gains, which could actually allow it to be competitive again, but it will require that Intel actually pushes the clock speed as we can see right here. Now, a couple of game streaming notes, NVIDIA GeForce Now is coming to iOS Safari, where you're gonna be able to stream it on Safari, but not to be top the lesser streaming service Stadia is also doing that on Safari via web app. Great stuff. Yesterday was Stadia's one year anniversary in which the VP talked more about the platform and how they're going to be doing it going forward, including committing to more free to play games like Destiny 2 was, which I think is a really dumb idea. And what's also a dumb idea, uh, not this Cyberpunk's trailer got released yesterday because yesterday was supposed to be the official release date and said we got a five minute long trailer, which just gets me more excited for the game. I'm very happy about about that, but in case you order Cyberpunk on Stadia, which I don't know why you would do that, you'll get a free Premiere Edition bundle, which is the controller and the Chromecast. This is the most backwards way of doing it. If you want people to come onto your platform to play Cyberpunk, have them buy a $10 a month subscription, right, to Stadia Pro, no contract, cancel whenever you want, and then give them Cyberpunk for free. $10, you get Cyberpunk for free, you'll see an influx of people coming in, and and then it's just a software license thing. You're not shipping out physical hardware. Nobody wants this. Nobody wants this, Stadia. It doesn't make any sense why you would do this. This is so bass backwards. It's crazy. And I don't understand why people would buy Cyberpunk on Stadia, where if Google at some point, which they're inevitably going to do, decides to can the entire project, you no longer have access to that game, as opposed to something like GeForce Now, where if you buy the game on Steam or wherever, you stream it through GeForce Now, but then when you cancel your GeForce Now subscription and decide you want to play on a regular gaming PC, you still own the game. It's not locked down. Stadia, I want to love you, but you make it so hard. <sighs> but Intel's not making it hard for Ultrabook manufacturers to make Ultrabooks because they have a new NUC M15 laptop kit that they're unveiling. The M15 laptop kit has an 11th gen mobile processor, which uh, through my Tiger Lake time, I have not enjoyed in Intel Iris Z integrated graphics, 15.6 inch 1080p touchscreen display, and then 73 watt hours for all of the goodness that's going on there. So essentially you're just gonna see all of these laptops everywhere with different manufacturers slapping 
their label on it. Speaking of new products though, NZXT is expanding its AIO product line with new Krakens. I actually have my Z53 right here, which is the one with the OLED, but now it comes in 240 millimeter variety as opposed to the 280 and the 360 that I believe that they were shipping before. So that's neat. They also are announcing new Krakens that have RGB fans in case you care about that. There's the MSRPs. The Z53 is going for $230. It's an OLED screen where you can customize it to put whatever you want on there with GIFs and all of that. So that's, it's just fun. Quickly talking about Crossfire X, which is a shooter that apparently is coming out to the Xbox and supposed to be an exclusive. It got delayed just in case you care about that. GM is announcing that they're going to launch 30 electric vehicles by 2025. I'm glad to hear that they're making more than just one Hummer. We can have 30 of them. And then Roblox has filed to go public. They submitted their IPO yesterday and should be on the stock exchange at some time soon. And the little saddest news of the day, the Arecibo Observatory, which saw some damage happen to it in the past few months, it has to be torn down instead of rebuilt because as they were evaluating whether or not they should repair it, they said that the cost to human life would be too great while trying to do that. And so it just has to be torn down. Sad. That sucks. And that's the end of this episode of Hot News. And then on a down note, let's pick it back up with today's video sponsor, Dot Tech Domains. I would highly encourage you, number one, to go find out about their tech domains, obviously, because like that's what they do. But then also go check out the link in the video description to check out the giveaway, the, the games, the prizes, break the code, spend some time figuring out puzzles and riddles, enter your email address and potentially be able to win some of their $15,000 in prizes, including up to a $5,000 custom gaming PC. So check it out. The link in the video description. Big thanks to Dot Techno Mates for sponsoring today's video. That's going to be all I have for hot news. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. I'm Brett and I'll check you in the next video. Cheers.